The Dallas Cowboys have concluded the 2024 preseason. We'll tell you who's on the roster bubble and who's not. Plus, how big of an injury is Deron Bland's foot injury? All that and more in this episode of the Lot Don Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a free three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. No more no more solo shows for Landon. That's right. Yeah, thanks, Landon, for filling in for me for a couple of days. But uh, Thank goodness you're get... back, for goodness sakes. Uh, yeah, that's I mean, that's the key thing. <laughs> this is the longest break I've taken from doing podcasts in, I think, six or seven years. So it's it's been a bit. But Let's talk about some Cowboys preseason stuff. Obviously, we're going to talk about Trey Lance. We're going to talk about who's on the roster bubble, who made the team, who did not. But let's start with some very unfortunate news that we got on Saturday Mm -hmm. afternoon. Deron Bland, the Cowboys all-pro cornerback, suffered a foot injury. Uh, He's, I believe he's already had surgery. Mm -hmm. The expectation is that he's going to miss, miss six to eight weeks. That's likely going to mean four to six games, maybe seven games. If they stretch it through the bye, how big of a loss is this for Dallas? <clears throat> well, it's, I mean, you know, replacing him is going to be extremely difficult, obviously. You know, you and you and I, and, and I feel like you and everybody else have been talking about the fact that uh, the Cowboys just can't seem to get their, you know, superstar duo cornerback, no matter who it is, out on the field at the same time, right? Like, it's it obviously happened last year uh, where the Cowboys got digs and, uh, uh, Gilmore out for just, I think, you know, what was it? Two games, two or games, one and a half yeah, games? Two yeah. games. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, now that the, the bland kind of finally emerged, we were excited to see that duo. And, and obviously this happens like, so it's, it's, it's frustrating extremely. Um, but on the bright side, you know, I was talking about this, you know, before the game as well, it always feels like these preseason injuries sting a lot more than the regular season ones do. When it when in an actuality, it's almost better to get injured early in the season than it is to get injured late in the season, right? So, um, I, I do think that you know it is a couple a couple things just to kind of, you know, silver lining aspect of this, right? You you just mentioned he did already have the surgery, so that six to eight uh, week time frame that started that clock started when he had surgery. I think he had surgery before the game, so. Um, uh, that that's going on. I think he actually had it the day before the game, if I'm not mistaken. So that, that, that clock has already started. That means that he'll probably be back, you know, a week or two before the Cowboys have their buy in October. Um, I think, you know, Carson has been out here playing incredibly well. And I think we'll talk about that as, you know, a plan moving forward. But I think, you know, the, the hope is that by the time Bland gets back, you have Carson playing at a level that you don't feel like you have to blitz to get Bland back on the field. You can give him a little bit more time. Um, and then maybe we can even kind of get to a point where you, you feel comfortable if you need to waiting until the bye week uh, to kind of, you know, give him another extra week to come back from this. And then the other thing I'll mention is that, you know, it is the fifth metatarsal uh, that is, uh, I'm probably mispronouncing that, that, that the famous uh, kind of injury that the Jones uh, fracture, is, the yeah. Jones fracture. Right. But the good news is that it's not, it, it wasn't broken from what I understand. It yeah. was just strained. So, so uh, it's not quite the same as what, Des and some other people have famously gone through it's 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 a less severe version of that so still required surgery obviously um but hopefully uh it it will give him a little bit better chance to kind of bounce back from it a little bit quicker than some of those other guys so the cowboys have a week seven bye right i think they play the lions in week six and then they play the 49ers i believe in week eight i don't have the schedule in front of me i think that's that's the correct thing 
Sounds right. Yes, is the Cowboys are going to be pretty cautious here, right? Deron Bland's a young yeah. player who they value quite a bit. Unless things have just gone so terribly wrong in the first month of the half of the season where they feel like they have to rush him on the field, I would bet that we see him after the bye. They'll probably give him those six weeks to get ready, a couple of weeks to practice and get ready for the season, and then coming out of the bye against the 49ers, it was when we'll probably see him. It sucks. I mean, to have an all-pro player like Deron Bland, you know already missing a third of the season is rough. Um, but at the same time, you still have Trayvon Diggs, yep. you still have Jordan Lewis. Most teams in the NFL don't have this situation, a cornerback where you're still having an all pro guy on the other side and one of the best slot corners. That's a huge opportunity for Kalen Carson, who I, I would expect is going to get the first shot at winning this job. Maybe oh, yeah. the booth will play some more. Maybe somebody like Izzy Makamu will get some more snaps, but I got to believe Kalen Carson is going to be your week one starter. First of all, yes, you, you nailed it. Uh, the sixth game or week six is first Detroit. That that really does feel like the first one of those games where, I mean, how can I say this? I mean, Baltimore is going to be a very difficult game, obviously, but th- that really feels like the first game in which you really feel like you want all three of your corners out there, right? Yeah. Just because. Well, and the Browns game a little bit, but it's different. Yeah, yeah, it's different. Um, second of all, I, I think, as you mentioned, uh, I, I think the, the, the timing of it, you know, kind of worked out just so that the bye week is right when this injury would be coming back. I I tend to think that they give Carson the full slate for the whole six weeks. Uh, there's nothing that's been going on at this camp that tells you that he can't handle it. I, I'm not saying that that's a guarantee that he will handle it, but there isn't anything that, uh, that he's done out here. Uh, he's one of these guys that's been out here. Uh, and the drumbeat has been consistent. Like there hasn't been an up and down day for K- Kalen Carson. He's been uh, fantastic out here almost every single day. So uh, if you're going to have a guy, if you're going to have to have a starter rookie <laughs> on week one, outside of the rookies you're already starting, I guess. I mean, Kalen Carson is without a doubt the guy that you want to just based on the performance that we've seen out here. We're, we're also, we're going to talk about some guys that perform well in week three of the preseason, but you had a fifth round rookie corner. Yeah, not dressed for a preseason game, not because he's hurt, because his spot on the roster is already solidified. Now, maybe that tells you what Mike McCarthy thinks of the preseason. Maybe it also just tells you what the Cowboys think of Kalen Carson, right? Like, I think they've seen enough. I think it's at least enough to tell you that they had the information about Bland and they knew that the Kalen Carson was the guy that they needed to shut down because he's taking that spot, right? So either way, I think it, it reads well for Bland taking, uh, I mean, it reads well for Carson taking Bland's spot. I, I would I would have guessed that Carson likely wasn't playing in this game even before the Bland news yeah. came down, simply yeah. because that's just how good of a training camp he's had where his spot is secured. They needed to see the kind of down yeah. roster guys that he had you know, leapfrogged over, essentially. The last thing I want to say about Deron Bland before we move on, hmm. I don't want to see the Cowboys rush him back to the field. Now we've seen historically younger players recover from this injury better than older players. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't mess around with a cornerback that relies on quickness and speed so much. Like one of the things that tends to happen is these guys rush back onto the field with this Jones fracture, they re injure it. And then they've got to get a bigger surgery that requires yeah. pins and screws and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to mess around with that. If it means giving him two or three more weeks so he feels 100% healthy and he trusts that foot, to me it's worth it. Like You can still accomplish all of your goals this year if Deron Bland doesn't play the first nine weeks of the season. Like it's, I, he's, a, he's an awesome player. He's very important to this defense, but you want him healthy not only for the end of the season, but you want him healthy for the rest of his career because I think he is a – cornerstone type of player for your defense that Detroit game is going to be a big game for the Cowboys but ultimately it comes down to do you want him for that Detroit game or do you want to give someone who has a Jones fracture or a Jones not fracture a Jones injury uh uh two extra weeks off that foot and I think right you know, even as big as that game is, the answer is you want to give him two extra weeks likely off of that foot I want Deron Bland healthy for the second Detroit game this year, not the first one. How's that? 
anyway. Uh, that's a, that's uh, a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's talk about Trey Lance, who had a wild preseason. He had a <laughs> wild week three performance. Let's yeah. dig in to that next. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you hire for your small business, you want quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you hire the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In any given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to the locked on Cowboys podcast. We'd like to thank you for making locked on your first listen of the day for your second listen. Enjoy the locked on fantasy football podcast, get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season. Part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. All right, Landon, let's talk about Trey Lance. Let's, we can talk about week three of the preseason if you'd like the the five turnovers, the four hundred yards of offense. But I'd rather just take a big picture look at Trey Lance mm. in the preseason. How do you think he performed as a whole uh, through these three games? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that he, he what what you really uh, and this is what we've kind of I've harped on a lot, you know, d- during the week is that. I really think the big thing here is 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 this going to is this an improving situation? Is this a guy that's on the rise, or or does he have, you know, kind of fundamental flaws that are just not fixable? And and I think that what we've seen is is a guy who has uh, has gotten better at at certain aspects of his game as the weeks gone on. We've watched him get better. Um, I and I even think that the the third game, despite a lot of the statistical stuff that's there, there was a lot of extremely positive stuff that happened in that third game that didn't happen in those first two games. I thought he made some throws in that third game that he he what well, I don't know that I thought he could make in the, the throw to John game. Stevens that he uh, fumbled. I thought that was his best throw of the preseason. That that third down strike to Tyron Billy Johnson up down mm-hmm. this up on, on the sideline. And you know, so there were a couple of different throws that I thought were really was really good stuff. And and you know, the negative stuff, look, I mean, I think in this third game, they asked him to open it up a little bit, especially as the game kind of went on, right? Like, I, I think if you watch the game early on when you had a lot more of the kind of competent players in there and he was maybe on script a little bit more, you saw a lot more of a, of a confident, comfortable thrower. I mean, there was definitely stretches of this game where he looked at his best that he had all, all week, right? I mean, all, all, all preseason, I mean. Um, and, and so I, I think that, you know, obviously as the kind of game went on, there was some other stuff that kind of popped up, you know, the interception in the end zone, the one that was kind of stolen away from a wide receiver, you know, I just, so I, obviously he didn't finish the game very strong, but I, I think, you know, if we are taking a step back and looking at, at what he's done in the preseason, I think if you look at the skills that he has and the ability that he has, and, and I think you know, a couple of people put it this way, and I think ultimately it boils down to he does things that are very difficult for quarterbacks to do very easily. I think it was Bob's think, term. Yeah. 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 And then he does things that are very uh, easy for quarterbacks, very difficult. You know, they're very, very, it's very hard for him. So I, I think that, when you consider the fact that what he has in his athleticism and, and not just like the speed, which we saw even more of, which goodness gracious, I mean, he really can't take off. Like he, he has yeah. running back vision. He has the ability to break tackles in the pocket. He navigates the pocket. Well, he doesn't, you know, abandon being a quarterback too early and, and rely too much on his legs. You know, he still tries to get the ball down the field. Uh, I, I think that these are all positive and things that uh, developable uh, traits that I want to try to kind of get another year in. And, and look, I think ultimately 
he was getting paid five million dollars either way. Like he was gonna be on the roster. Yeah. So yeah. keeping that in mind, like I'm I'm excited to see where he is a year from now, just based on how far he's come, you know, in, in the in the limited about of snaps that we've been able to see him, which, you know, is basically the maximum that you can in a preseason at this point. Yeah. I got a lot of takes that I want to fire off. I've been off a week. So I, I've been, I've been just, you know, thinking of all these, first of all, I don't think I, I thought Scott Tolzien, who was calling plays did not call yeah. a very, very good game for him. I mean, a lot of weird decisions, especially at the end, right? It yeah. felt like early on things were good, but especially at the end. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think if Trey Lance had to start a game for the Cowboys this year, you would see a very, very different game plan. I think you'd see a lot of zone reads, probably a lot of defined reads. Like, okay, if my first option is not there, I'm going to the running back and then I'm or to the tight end and then I'm running the ball. Right. So what you saw in the third preseason game, is it anything like what you would see in a regular season game? No. If Lance were called, he still looks like an athlete playing quarterback. And at, at times that's great. There was a time where, I think there was a third down uh, at the end of the game where he had to break like three or four tackles just to have the ability to throw the ball to Snoop Connor, uh, you know, on the yeah. sideline. Like there's only so many guys that have the strength to be able to do that and then keep your eyes downfield. So there are things that I really like. The thing that's a little concerning to me, Lennon, is the, the third down stats. That's the money down in the NFL. And if you look at his third down numbers throughout the preseason, 26 passing attempts, 116 yards, zero touchdowns, three interceptions, 4.5 yards per attempt, a passer rating of 26. Now, there were a lot of drops uh, in that sample size. Um, he was pushing the ball down the field. The dot was actually pretty encouraging. But if, he, if he's going to ever make it as a quarterback, it's third down where he needs to be better. Oh, without a doubt. You know, I mean, and I and I completely agree. And what, that was one of the points I had brought up earlier in the week, too, is that, it, it, you know, if you give him that second game uh, preseason game plan uh, or or at least, you know, even go lead further into what, what they were doing in the second preseason game, you're obviously going to get different results. And that's and that's kind of the thing that's a little bit difficult about this evaluation is that, you know, we're evaluating Trey Lance in Dak Prescott's offense. Right. And, and, and they couldn't be further. Yeah. They couldn't be further from Trey Lance is a lot like what Dak was his, his senior year at, at Mississippi state. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, and, the, and I'll, I'll just one comment too about the, the quarterback uh, athlete playing quarterback. That is, I do feel like that is absolutely true. The thing that makes me, you know, feel like that he's just a little bit better than that is for example, what he, what he was doing to get, uh, 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 get them into position to kick that 66 yard field goal. Right. Yeah. He understood the, the situation. He got, got up and down. He made a play and then got down with one second left to get the timeout. You know, he he's doing, he's, he's making line calls and he's getting them out of bad run plays. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like there are things about him that are true quarterback. Right. But you're right. He does still kind of suffer from the same sort of, uh, uh, issues that those sort of athletes playing quarterback, as, as you said, uh, yeah. suffer from, right? Uh, consistent accuracy. You, those guys are always going through footwork changes, and that's what Trey's going through. So the question becomes like, can you get better with it through development? Can you know, through snaps? Are you going to get better with your footwork more consistent? I feel like we saw it through the th three weeks of the preseason. Um, but I think, you know, one more year uh, is, is at least, is at least needed before he's going to be ready, ready to like, you know, be in the discussion for a backup quarterback role or, or any, or, you know, potentially starting quarterback role, depending on how far he goes in the next year. I think it was Peter from lot on Packers said that he got into a bad situation in the sense that he hasn't been given a chance or been on a team that has just allowed him to play yeah. like 14 games in a row and kind of work through some of these struggles. He was on a 49ers team that was ready to compete for a Super Bowl, and then he got hurt, and then he got traded to Dallas, right? And he's been behind Dak. He just hasn't had very many opportunities to play, even going back to North Dakota State. So mm -hmm. he just needs the reps. I don't know how many he's going to get during the year, like in practices, because those practices are geared towards the starter, giving the starter as many reps as possible. He's going to need to do this kind of by himself, yeah. That's a really tough spot for a young quarterback.
Yeah, I mean, but it, he doesn't have another choice, really. You nope. know, it's like it's either this or go play in the UFL or XFL or whatever it's being called this week. So, uh, you know, it's 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 tough because it's like with quarterbacks, especially it's like you need reps specifically. And, it, and it's a tough thing to kind of get. It's one of the rarest things, the rarest commodities in all the NFL is reps. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's talk about the, the preseason. Let's talk about players that we think might have snuck onto the 53 man roster. Which ones played themselves off the roster? We will get to that <laughs> next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard us talk a ton about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I love it. I've already been making bets for the NFL regular season. I've been getting ready for week one. Cannot wait for the action to kick off. But we've got something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a free three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, You'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. I've been a Sunday ticket subscriber for 20 years now, maybe a little bit under that. Absolutely <laughs> love it. I don't know what I would do without it. Go get yours now. All you got to do is bet $5. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Every day is on tomorrow's show. We're going to talk about some 53-man roster stuff, who made the roster, who didn't. Uh, the rosters are official, quote-unquote <laughs> official, as of 4 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. I'm sure we will get some news about who the Cowboys are moving on from, some trades, so tune in for that show. But, Landon, I've got a list of names here that I just want to yeah. run through kind of quickly. You tell me whether you think they are on or off the 53 man roster. Now I want to preface this by saying let's call it the week one roster because there's going to be a lot of different moves. The Cowboys make, they're going to cut guys like Ryan anger, probably in Cooper rush and then put them back on the roster. But I want you to tell me if you think these guys are going to make the week one roster and let's start with Deuce Vaughn. I think Deuce Vaughn is actually going to make the roster. Um, I, I, I think he's played well enough in these last two games to make it, you know, uh, uh, the turnaround real and it's been consistent. That's the thing that's really exciting. I think is that, I mean, he's averaging, I didn't see what the numbers were for his game in the third, in the third game, but it was over six yards of carry. Uh, and, and, and it was, it was a positive situation overall. Uh, so I, I, I think, you know, it's to the, it's, you know, I think there's been a lot of kind of talk about how they're going to play this running back situation to me. They're definitely going to play Malik Davis. They may play Malik Davis more than Deuce Vaughn. But I don't think they're going to keep him on the roster because they've seen Malik Davis make it through waivers. They'll see Malik Davis make yeah. it through waivers again. They'll call him up from the practice squad as they need him. And if they need to sign him to the regular uh, uh, regular 53-man roster at some point, they can do that on the other side of week one. But uh, the running back room is such a bizarre situation because, you know, the, the, the value of running backs and the fact that, you know, the Cowboys don't have very many valuable running backs. So uh, I think really... Deuce Vaughn and Rico Gathers are really well. Zeke, I, I guess, uh, probably not. Rico, no, are really the Rico old... Dottle or Rico Gathers? Is... <laughs> God, Rico <laughs> Dottle. Rico Gathers is going to make it through waivers. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. Rico Dottle and, and Deuce Vaughn are to me the only ones who like would be any kind of any threat of potentially being snatched up by somebody. Uh, not that Dowdle is someone that you would put through the no, waivers, but just saying like, those are the only two that I feel like would be snatched up. And Vaughn's really just on potential. He's a draft pick, right? So may, I would think maybe take someone take a flyer on that sh shot. So that's why I think Vaughn makes the squad that I don't know that that necessarily means that he's the third running back though. I do think that he's probably likely earned the opportunity to get some touches and at least see how it goes again this year. I kind of agree with you. I think Vaughn makes the roster and unless something opens up where they can go out and get a Miles Sanders, Khalil Herbert, Je Jeff Wilson. I think he probably is going to be on the roster. Let's run through some other names uh, quicker. Yeah. Um, Ryan Flournoy. I have him on. I, I think he yeah, he's I done think enough so. just in the last few weeks. Yeah, I think so too. I think he's going to be probably that last re receiver on the roster who's not active on game day, but I don't think they want to expose him to waivers. Mm -hmm. um, next one. Brevin Spain Ford, the Cowboys. Uh, rookie tight end who they spent a lot of money on uh, in undrafted free agency. 
No, I, I have him on the on the tight on the practice squad, but I, I don't think he makes the roster. I mean, I just I honestly have them keeping three tight ends at this point. I, I mean, even though I think they're going to play a lot of tight end, um, uh, I just don't know that I'm going to save a save a spot for those guys at this point, just because there's I, some really guys. I bet you they they feel like they can get one, if not both, of Peyton Hendershot and yep. uh, Brevin Spain for the practice squad. So they probably won't stress there. This next one's really interesting. Josh Ball. I have Josh Ball making the team. It's crazy because uh, I, I did not expect this at all. I, I, yeah, me neither. Uh, he's definitely the one of the most surprising guys in camp so far. And I, and I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't end up actually on the team. I wouldn't be shocked if he became trade bait for something else because uh, I, you have to think that, that teams are watching the Cowboys' offensive line room and it'd be hard to kind of miss Ball, I think, at yep. this point. They're not going to trade Awesome Richards, who I think is is had a better camp, but still – Ball has been good enough that you feel like I, I would take a flyer on him if I'm looking for a guy to develop into a starter. Maybe he he may be he may be getting close to that yeah. that level. All right, a couple more. We're gonna run through quickly. Uh, Sorry, Jordan yeah. Fuh- uh, Junior Fahoku. No, get him get him out of here. It's just yeah. especially after that contain uh, on the, that first play of the game. I, I'm just done. Go go let him play for Washington. Andrew Booth. I do have him making the squad just because they just finished that trade with him. They're going to need another body there. He has, he's, it's been very, very up and down to say the least. Yeah. Uh, but I do think there's some things you can do in coverage to kind of cover him up if you need to play him a little bit. And I do think it's development worth. Yeah. I think he makes it. I, although that would be a spot that I would be looking to maybe upgrade if the yeah, right guy came available. Uh, a couple more. Uh, Willie Harvey, the Cowboys UFL linebacker they signed. No, but can I give you a name of the guy instead? I think does make it Buddy Johnson. Yeah, yeah I, I, I but he's just played fantastic these last two weeks. He's looked really good. Uh, I just think he's been uh, a more consistent player through this training camp and preseason. All right, Justin Rogers, the Cowboys seventh round pick at defensive tackle. I have him making it right now. Um, we'll see. I mean, you know, there's. There's whispers that the Cowboys aren't done, you know, looking at defensive tackles. So maybe there's a chance that he ends up on the practice squad and playing, but I think he ends up playing for the Cowboys this year. I I agree. I think he ends up on the practice squad to start. And then when somebody gets injured or they just need another body in November or December, I think he comes up. Uh, Tyrus Wheat. I don't have him uh, on here and I don't have him on the practice squad, but he did have a really good game. I I wouldn't be shocked. They gave him a lot of money last year. So. I, he's, I don't know that he fits this defense very well the way he did last. No. Uh, Eric Scott. No. I, I think I have him as a practice squad guy. I don't know, though. I may not even have a practice <laughs> squad guy. I, I think. So you're out on Eric Scott. You're just done. I, I just think that they should cut bait on the guys that, like, that aren't a fit. You know, like, don't, yeah. don't, you know, it, it, he has just hasn't done a ton. Maybe you feel like you keep him now because of the injury, like, if you're going to keep an extra outside guy, but uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Last one Tyron Billy Johnson. I don't have him. I have him on the practice squad, but I just think that he's, he's bounced around the league. And that's, I think that's the thing that you got to look at a lot of the stuff is like, what's the history there? Because that's what teams are going to look at when they look at these lists. Right. So uh, he's bounced around the league. It's not like he's been so exceptional that someone's going to be like, Oh wow. Like that guy's had a really great cape. Let's pick him up. I think he ends up making it to the practice squad. And he's one of these veteran practice squad guys who ends up playing for the Cowboys in a couple of games this year. Can I give you one really hot take on a player where I wouldn't be upset if they caught him in favor of if they wanted to go long on the defensive line or the offensive line, John Stevens jr. Um, for a couple of reasons, I, I think I thought he's looked okay in the preseason, but I just don't want, I, I don't know if the Cowboys cut him, if anybody else is signing him after a torn ACL being undrafted, like, could he be a guy that goes under practice squad and you bring him up a couple times a year when you need him? I, I would rather, to me, I would rather keep Hunter Lipke and another running back and just let Lipke do the third tight end stuff. So in your world, how many tight ends would they take to that point? How many tight ends would they have week one? Like, you know, I mean, two and then a rotating third, depending on the week. Maybe like some weeks you bring up Brevin Spain Ford if you need more blocking. If you need another receiver, maybe that's when you bring up John Stevens. See, here's the name that we're missing here that I can't believe that you, of all people, have forgotten is 
Princeton Fant. I, I think it's more likely that Fant is the guy that's on the practice squad because then he gives you backup at both fullback well, and tight end. I think he which will be on why, the practice squad. I, I, yeah. I, my point is I don't think John Stevens has been so good that I'm willing to keep him over other guys that I think are more worthy of being on the roster. Hmm. That's that's fair. I mean, I, I would rather, I think, I'd rather go deep at linebacker, I think. How many linebackers do you have going right now in your head? Six. Yeah, I've got five right now. Yeah. And I think because I think that you can get like, you know, a couple of these worthy down roster guys on on practice squad and call them up if you need to. Probably. Uh, I just also wouldn't be surprised if that's a spot where they sign somebody, like if they make a waiver claim or they add a vet. Like I could see them wanting to get more depth at that position, especially if, if Micah Parsons is going to be playing more defensive end maybe just grab another guy there but i can't wait to see all the roster moves the cowboys make over the next couple days should be a lot of fun we'd like to thank you for making locked on cowboys your first listen every single day again for your second listen go like it go listen to the locked on fantasy football podcast get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season you can find the link to the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast in the descriptions of this show, so you don't even need to go search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. We've got busy shows for you all week, getting you ready for week one. Again, check us out on YouTube or wherever you download your podcast. We are free and available on all platforms, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.